Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Our House 21 and it's time for a quick tip. So this one is a companion video to go along with my last one, which was showing how to wire up the battery side castle connectors. So this right here is pretty quick because the process for doing the ESC side castle connectors is actually pretty quick and straightforward. So a couple ways to do this. This is the way this thing's work for me. So I can get something to hold the battery lead right here. And typically I use a board that I drilled out some holes in it and I just drop those right in. Uh, alternately, you can do this method right here where you take a vice grip, some sort of locking plier, and you hold the battery lead. And for those who aren't aware, these are six and a half millimeter castle connectors. They come in different sizes. But you now this is 200 amp rated, a 200 plus amp rated that I'm using for my speed run cars. So I get this guy, I hold it down here. So the method is you take your soldering iron, and you see I've got this big old 100 watt soldering gun, but you can also use this method with a typical um, 60 watt or so. Uh, glass solder and soldering iron as well but basically you stick your irons tip inside and you get this nice pool of solder nice and melted so if you are probably going to need to add some to it like that but you end up with a pool of molten solder inside of here so once you have this little pool of solder going you quickly remove the iron you take your ESC lead and you drop in it now it works better if you tend the ends. That means if you've heated up the ends and you've put in a coat of solder on the connectors. Now, most ESC leads, most brand new ESCs are gonna have pre tin leads to begin with. But let's say you're wiring up a new connector or something like that, or something that uh, you have to clip the old leads off of, you should go back and retin this. Also, don't forget to put on your polarized connector in the proper orientation before you actually try to put your connectors on. I've actually screwed up the job once before where I've either forgot to put that on or I have the thing on backwards. So double check your things. Uh, also, the castle connectors are polarized. So you see there's negative and positive. So you just wanna make sure you have it on the right side. You don't wanna to have to desolder and try to resolder stuff as well. So again, simple process, get all the connectors lined up, make sure you have your 10 connectors. Keep this guy nice and heated up until the little pool, well, and get a nice pool of solder inside of here. Once you have that going on, quickly remove the iron and drop this lead into it. And voila, you end up with something that looks like this. All right, so then you're almost done. Notice I said almost. Now the last part of the job is that these little guys now have to get pushed through here because there's actually you can see inside here there's a little lip in here that okay, well, you can't really see it from this angle but there's a little detent in here a little notch that these little ridges on the side of the lead here these little ridges plug in like they, uh, they, they drop right into that notch and that holds it in position so what I've learned to do is take one of my little tire iron things here. And this is just a typical uh, tire wrench that comes with the Traxxas models. And, or you can use a socket, you can use a variety of things. The special thing about this is that it has a fairly shallow cup. So you take that guy, you fit it over the little plug, and then you can turn this thing kind of on and incline. You want to do something where you are holding this nice and secure. If you can put it on the edge of a table or something like that, where this is put up against a hard edge, so it won't um, bounce around in your hand, that also helps out as well. So you take your wrench, put it over this, get it onto something secure, and then you can just pound it in. And be careful not to pound it too hard. You'll actually feel it click into the notch and then you're done. The nice thing about that is that once it's in, then it can actually rotate around a little bit. 
so that it actually makes the connector actually easy to move. Oh, one little thing that I forgot. So if you use the method here with this little tire wrench to pound this thing in place, sometimes these things are tapered on the inside. You can kind of see that bevel down in there. And what will happen is when you whack that thing in, it will actually pinch the top of the contact narrower. That's not a good thing. That that These things rely on spring loading from the connector in order to get a good contact. So if that happens to you, like you see it happen to me here, all you have to do is take a tool, kind of like one of these things right here. And you can put this down in the middle of the connector and just bend these prongs back out so it doesn't take a whole lot of force be careful you do it and it helps if you have like a extra end like my little jumper here that you can put back and forth in just to double check to make sure that the connector is nice and um and moves fluidly another little trick that i use to keep these things from binding up is i use a little bit of silicon lubrication inside the battery site connector and that lets them slide back and forth, uh, slide in and out without getting all bound up. Because these things can actually have a lot of friction and they can be a bear to take apart if you don't have any kind of lubricant in there. So the process isn't too drawn out, it's not too crazy, but it's you know, it can be a little intimidating for people who haven't wired things up. But I will tell you, this is a whole lot easier than trying to wire up a Dean's connector. My God, <laughs> Dean's connectors, these things are just a pain in the butt, at least for me. Maybe I don't have the right technique, but I, 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 do, I do not like wiring Dean's connectors. Oh, and for those who might be asking, why do I have a Dean's connector connected with a Castle connector? Those of you who know I'm, I'm in the cat pack business, but for my cars, I like to have cat packs have a little test lead on here. So I need to change the cat packs to test how different ones work. So the way that I've come up to do that is by putting a little Dean's connector on the end of my cat packs so I can plug them in and plug them out and swap them out very quickly. So that's just something I do for my personal fleet. So it's an optional thing, but something I like to do. All right, guys, so I hope you guys found that interesting. Our House 21 signing out. Remember the mantra, fly, fix, fly, break it, fix it, and do it all over again. And don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and all the other social media stuff. All right, guys, Our House 21 signing out. Peace.